The kingdom is advancing, we will never take sides yeah, We came to take over, there's no need to hide We will occupy, we take in the city Born at such a time, cause the Lord is with me I will proclaim and remain Yes, I am a tither uh-huh. God is coming through The devil is a liar Anointed by the spirit Take in the marketplace Rise up, son and daughter And make the change Head in of the tail Tell me why you acting frail We going bigger, thinking bigger At a massive scale We put our hands to the plow So we will prevail Never fail those days of poverty Yes, it's setting sail Out of our lives With God we are prosperous The climate of this world No, it doesn't bother us From a different kingdom They can't be hard on us We will overcome That's what God has promised us Agents of change Be the change And make a change We have power in the name To break the chains By the blood and the tide Revokes the curse A spoken word Open doors No lack of thirst We making history Unlocking the mysteries Calling forth what we see And surely that is victory Everywhere we tread We will see his face Mode taking over young there The kingdom is advancing, we will never take sides We came to take over, there's no need to hide We will occupy, we take in the city Born at such a time, cause the Lord is with me I will proclaim and remain Yes, I am a tither God is coming through Praise God, good evening I'm so excited to have you join me today well, we are not in our normal studio setup. We're here in the lounge where there is a fire. Now we we love fires, my wife and my wife and I love to sit by the fire and just relax, read or whatever it is. But my daughter was saying to me the other day, "Dad, you should shoot you do one of your shoots by the fire. It's so aesthetic, it's so beautiful." And eventually I think I conceded and I said, Not only is it aesthetic, but it is warm. Normally when I shoot uh, the normal ones, I have to sit there by by the desk and I've got a blankie over my legs just to keep warm and the, 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 the tea or something to keep me warm. Today I got my hot chocolate. I got the fire. So I'm sorted. But I want to say welcome to you. It's so good to have you joining in on this special series of economic masters we want to turn up the heat on your finances turn up the heat of your economic success turn up the heat of the word of god so that you and i can get ourselves into the next level but i want to say please do me a great favor like subscribe follow uh connect with dr titch uh Do all the stuff that you know you're supposed to do. Click the bell. I just want to connect with you. And what's the reason that we connect with you? Because our mission, our vision, our focus is empowering the body of Christ for economic mastery. We're here to empower the the body of Christ, the church, for economic mastery. The church is going through turbulence. The church is going through the uh, post-COVID trauma and churches are beginning to rebuild members are beginning to go back to church people are beginning to give again to tithe again and so we are in a season of recovering from the impact and the blow of what the enemy did to the church during the lockdown but that necessitates that we must be strategic we must be deliberate in the process through which we become kingdom financiers the process through which we begin to channel resources into the church into the local church where you belong so i want to i want to have that conversation last week we we were having conversations directed at couples families to say how do you break out of the debt cycle so if you missed those you're a couple you want to get financial freedom i'd encourage you go back and and search couples and financial freedom couples and economic mastery look back at the sessions that we did last week but this week we want to talk about increase i want to talk to you about increase yesterday we had an interview with one of our authors and we have a few more authors that we're going to be interviewing just before the launch of oh the book the book the book the launch of the book the the making of a kingdom millionaire the journey of 15 millionaires, their study, their research. What did they read? Who did they study? What did they learn? What is the principle that 
that they learned from millionaires that impacted them the most and how have they applied it and how has it changed their lives this is what this book is all about the making of a kingdom millionaire and i want to encourage you get your hands on it more than that get your brain on it wrap your brain around it put it into your heart meditate in it and you're going to see your life changing now, let me ask you a couple of questions. Do you have a financial blueprint? Do you have a blueprint through which you are building and developing your wealth factor as a family, as an individual, as a business, or even as a church? You may be a pastor running a church. You may be in charge of your, the finances or the treasury in the ministry that you're called to. Whoever you may be, do you have a financial blueprint? What are you doing to develop your resource base? What are you doing to build the capacity to do what God has called you to do? There must be a deliberate strategy. And the strategy for me, one of the key things that I've learned over the last, uh, is it 12, 13 years? 13 years ago, the Lord gave me an encounter and in that encounter he said to me son go and tell the church the body of christ there is come to the body of christ or to the church a financial revival in this revival men and women will rise up out of debt get out of debt step into financial increase i will raise up economic masters and i will raise up kingdom financiers men and women who have an anointing and a grace to accumulate resources for the purpose of channeling them into the body of Christ, into their local church, in order to advance the kingdom of God. That means getting people saved, getting people discipled, getting children ministered to, getting people off drugs, getting families, marriages ministered to. All of this is part of that kingdom mandate that calls for you and I to be kingdom financiers. Your church should be running a school. Your church should be planting, uh, building a hospital. Your church should be doing some work in the community that changes the the value of that community developing young entrepreneurs impacting young people and i'm so glad that god has given us that privilege just near where we live here is a community called kaya sands and kaya sands it's an informal settlement my wife is the chairperson of a an organization called fugu zenzele where she's been working with them for over 10 years now where we are where she is a blessing we channel resources we put input in there we help them minister to the young people the young girls in that community working with a number of social workers so we are able to sow back to sow into give into the community that's what god wants us to do we run a school and we've been able over the years to sow significant amounts of money into children's school fees and helping families that were in distress and we've been doing that we're passionate about that over the last few years we have sown seed of books and resources materials we're going over the million mark into the millions being a blessing that's what the kingdom of god is all about and i could go on and on talking about some of the projects we've worked on but the bottom line is this as a kingdom financier god wants you to be a blessing god wants you to channel resources into the kingdom of god and that conversation is so important. That conversation is vital for you and I to understand that God wants our lives to be a blessing. So we're going to be talking this week about increase. I want to talk to you about how do I activate increase? How do I implement a personal strategy or plan to bring increase in my life? How do I uh, break out of debt? So this whole cycle and this whole conversation of becoming an economic master has two very key fundamental principles number one is the practical principles and so in every one of our sessions you'll always hear me mixing the two one side is the practical principles the other side is the spiritual laws the principles that govern money there's got to be a working together of these two uh, two elements in that arena of getting out <coughs> excuse me getting out of debt stepping into financial increase And establishing what we call generational wealth. God wants your life to be a blessing. God wants you to leave a legacy that will redefine generations to come. God wants you to start a school, a university, to build a hospital, to build an institution that rehabilitates people from drugs, substance abuse, to 
freedom and liberty. God wants you to plant a church. God may want you, like the centurion, to give money to the building of a church. So there are many elements, many facets to what we are talking about. But anyway, welcome, share this link, invite somebody and tell them, Dr. Teach is on with Economic Masters and let's get into our lesson today. We're going to be reading from Genesis chapter 26, one of my all-time favorites. I love to read about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They teach us so many powerful principles. We learn lessons of generational wealth. We learn the, the power of names and naming of children. We learn the principle of blessing the next generation. We learn the principle of family business. God wants your family to be involved in a family business. God has structured this world to function that way. The pressure of economic decay and the crisis of our generations has moved people further and further away from God's model of wealth, God's model of financial uh, empowerment and building generational wealth and family businesses. Satan has deliberately moved families away from that model in order to create pressure so that women would have to be engaged aggressively in a, in a, f a fight for survival kind of approach in the marketplace. And that was never God's intention. Families were supposed to build sustainable businesses within the family that create generational wealth so that your children are not brought into slavery, but your children are raised up in an environment that is conducive. And you may be saying, nah, that's not practical. That's not possible. Look at the Jewish community. Look at the Muslim community. That's exactly the model that they are using. They build wealth within the family. They build something lasting. And guess who works for them? It is you and I because we don't believe in the biblical model. Both the Muslims and the Jews have their model coming from Abraham, their father. And they have structured their lives according to the biblical blueprint. And guess what? It is working. The kingdom blueprint is working. Both the Jews and the Muslims have a specialized type of banking which is different from the babylonian banking model that everybody else is using and guess what it is working so you could debate and say nah the stuff that we're teaching is whatever but if it is working in the muslim community it's working in the christian community and all of them take their model back to their father abraham then i think we need to pause long enough to analyze and critically look at this thing and say perhaps we need to change the, the model that we are using because our children get bought into slavery. Slavery is when you work so hard for so little. You are laboring your wisdom, knowledge, intellectual property, resources, and skills are working for somebody else's vision for little or no return on investment to the person who is exerting or exhibiting or demonstrating those skills. So we have to have this honest conversation that says our model is wrong. So let's have a quick look at the model that's in the Bible. So pull out your Bible. I hope you have your Bibles when we look at these lessons because your Bible is important. Genesis chapter 26. Bring out your coffee, your tea, your hot chocolate or something to drink as we go through this lesson. And let's have ourselves a great time. Okay, I'm going to read. The Bible says here, there was a famine in the land. Aside from the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac and went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, and to Gerar. <coughs> now he's teaching us a very important lesson here. There was a famine, but not the first famine that was there. This is another famine. What will happen with famines, they are set like clockwork. One of the lessons that I do, and perhaps one of these days I just need to do a quick version of that, is an analysis of the financial cycles that happen and how every seven years, every seven years to the clock, there is designed to be a famine, which is designed to move finances out of the hands of the masses that's you and I, into the hands of a selected group of people. It is a system that has worked. Now, when God spoke to me about this, he said, son, do you know that there's a cycle? I said, no. And I, I said to one of our sons who was an actuary, 
and I said, please, can you go back and check in your studies if you ever saw anything about financial cycles that happen every seven years? He says, I don't know anything about it. I never saw it in our time of studies, but I will study. And he went and studied financial graphs and the movement of money and the, the, the New York Stock Exchange and global financial patterns. And he came back and he says, there is a pattern. And he showed me the pattern, and it was a study of 100 years. This is four, uh, 12 years ago when we did this. He gave me a breakdown of 100 years, and to the year, every seven years, there was a major financial collapse, and that pattern has been sustained even after he showed me the pattern seven years after the last year. He showed me another financial crisis came, and then another one came, and there's going to be another one coming again soon. So you have to understand the cycle of famines will come. But what do we do as believers when there's crisis? Do we go according to the pattern of the world and go into crisis mode? Or is there a blueprint that we can follow that will save us? And the answer is a resounding yes. So let's read a whole bunch of scripture. Then I'm going to give you some commentary on this. There was a famine. He went down to Gerar. Hashem <clears throat> appeared to him and said, do not descend to Egypt. Do not go down. Going down is just like your financial indices. When, when you see the, the graph going down, it means there's a recession. So this is what God was saying. Don't go down economically to Egypt, but remain in Gerar. He says here, don't go down to Egypt, but dwell in the land that I will indicate to you. Sojourn in that land and I will bless you. In other words, instead of going down, I will bless you. You will go up. For to you and to your offspring will I give these lands. And I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham, your father. Now listen to verse 4. I will increase your offspring like the stars of the heaven. And I will give your offspring all these lands. I will increase. God's mind is full of increase. And all the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your offspring. Because Abraham, here's the reason. Because Abraham, your father, the one who established the family DNA, he obeyed. He obeyed. Now notice the levels of obedience that activated a supernatural response from heaven. He obeyed my voice and he obeyed my safeguards, observed my safeguards and my commandments and my decrees and my Torahs. And so Isaac settled in Gerar. And <clears throat> when the men of that place asked about his wife, he said, eh, this is my sister. So we're going to jump that part, that exciting part about the little issue that happened. Let's jump to verse 12. Verse 12, here's the man who obeyed the instruction of the Lord who settled in Gerar, who didn't go down to Egypt, but obeyed the instruction following the pattern or the precedent set by his father Abraham when he obeyed God's instruction. So obedience activates the supernatural. Keep that in your mind. It says the man, talking about Isaac, became, oops, verse 12, and Isaac sowed in the land, and in that year he reaped a hundredfold. Thus Hashem blessed him. Now, I want you to notice something before I fly over this. God says, um, Isaac sowed in that land, and in that year he reaped a hundredfold. <laughs> the sages teach us a very important principle here. He says, you must note the definite articles. What are the definite articles? In that land, in that year. Which year? The year of the famine. What's the year of the famine? The year of the famine is the year when the land does not have the capacity to economically sustain the inhabitants of the land. That's a famine. When the land cannot sustain the inhabitants of the land from an economic perspective, that's called famine. But not only is there a definite article on the year, there's a definite article of that land. What land? The land of Gerar. The land of Gerar was not a... A, an agricultural hub for planting crops, so to speak. 
So even if you had planted crops under normal circumstances without the famine, you wouldn't have a guaranteed uh, fecund f uh, yield out of the ground. You wouldn't have a significant harvest coming out of the ground. But he wasn't planting in the soil of Gerah. He was planting in the soil of obedience, the soil of the blessing of the Lord. He says, remain in the land that I will show you, and it is there that I will bless you. Very important principle right there. And the man became great because he reaped, uh, God blessed him and he reaped a hundredfold. The man became great and kept becoming greater until he was very great. Now we notice God has increased on his mind. He had acquired flocks and herds and many enterprises and by the way i'm reading here from from the torah so it does sound a little bit different from what you get from the king james or the other uh, translation so it doesn't say servants here it says enterprises so he acquired flocks herds and enterprises what is the principle of increase it is based on what you acquire your acquisition so we see mergers and acquisitions is actually a biblical concept of increase but anyway conversation for those in business let's keep talking increase here he increased so much that the philistines envied him and the wells that his father's servants had dug uh, then uh, all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines has stopped up and filled them with earth. Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us, for you have become mightier than we. Then Isaac departed and went and encamped in the valley of Gerar, and he dwelt there. <clears throat> and Isaac dug a well. And uh, when he had dug the well, which had been dug in the days of Abraham, his father, and the Philistines had stopped them. And after Abram's death, and he had called them by the names which his father had called them, Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of fresh water, living water. And the herdsmen of Gerar quarrel, quarreled with him, and the herdsmen said to him, The water is ours. Notice, they were not arguing to say the well is ours. They argued and said the water is ours because based on the structure, he had come from Gerar, the upper part of Gerar, and he had gone, the Bible says here where we read, he settled in the valley. So when you know how aquifers or water underground operates, depending on where you dig your well, you now access water under the ground. <clears throat> Excuse me getting so excited here all by myself you access water under the ground and that will affect i i remember growing up as we grew up we grew up on plots with our dad he still lives on a plot he's still very green fingered does a lot of agriculture but one thing that we did notice depending on how deep your borehole was dug because you were not on municipal water you're on borehole water so if your neighbor dug a well that was deeper than yours, your water would flow for an hour, then it starts pumping air. Why? Because of the flow of water. So this is similar to what was happening here. They said the water is ours. You're accessing a resource which they were not accessing, but they were now debating because he had accessed a resource which they believed was there. So contention broke out. He dug another well. They came and contended over that and so on so the contention continued verse 21 and they dug another well and they quarried, quarreled over that also and he called it sitna and he relocated and he dug another well and they did not quarrel over it so they called that one rehoboth and then let's jump over verse 20 verse 20 uh, verse the last part of verse 22 <coughs> it says for now Hashem has granted us ample space that and we can be fruitful in the land. Your fruitfulness is dependent on your ability to access water. Your increase factor, you've got to be planted where there is water. That's why Psalm, 91, Psalm 92 states, 
that he that is planted in the house of the Lord shall be fat and flourishing, full of life, and he shall be still bearing fruit even in their old age. Your fruitfulness factor, your increase factor is dependent on your ability to access a critical resource called water from a natural perspective. But it is also the same spiritually. If you want to be fruitful, you've got to be planted in the right place. So the increase that came in was a result of them accessing the resource. He says, now we have enough space to be fruitful in the land. And then we go to the conversation that followed there. Listen to what he says in verse, yeah, let's go to verse 23. And he went to verse 24. Hashem appeared to him in that night and he says, I am the God of your father Abraham. Fear not, key word. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and increase your offspring because Abraham, because of Abraham, my servant. Don't be afraid. I will bless you. I will increase you because of Abraham, my servant. So there are certain things that God is able to do because of where you are connected. You must have an Abraham in your life. A, now, we do have Abraham as our father, according to the Bible. We also have God as our father. But you must be planted in a place where you have access to a spiritual authority who is pouring life wisdom principles into you that enable you to access the increase that God so he says I am doing this blessing you and bringing increase to your offspring because of Abraham my servant and there he built an altar and invoked Hashem by name and when he had pitched his tent there their Isaac's servants dug a well jump over verse 32 and it was on that very day that Isaac's servants came and told him about the well that they had dug. That he said to him, we have found water. And he named it Sheba. Sheba or Shiva. Therefore, the name of the city is Beer Sheba or Beer Shiva, which is there even unto this day. It was Shiva, the place of the, the, the well of covenant the well of covenant the well where a covenant was established so as i draw to a close i want to i always want to give you some things that you can hold on to i've given you some principles spiritually what is it that makes things work? Be connected. Be planted. Allow the water to flow in your life. You're not going to experience increase necessarily because you're in a fertile land, but you're in a place where the blessing of God is operating. Let me give you six keys that I call the laws of increase. Now, I could talk on each one of these laws for a week, but I'm giving them to you in just seven minutes. Why? so that we can study them over the next couple of days. But here's the good news. If you read my books, you'll see the, the adverts on the screen there. If you read my books, you'll begin to learn these laws, these laws that govern increase, that bring increase in your life. If you want to walk in increase, if you want to activate the principles of increase, here is where you must start off. How do I activate it in my life? Number one, Understand the law of obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God wants you to be obedient to his word, obedient to his principles. God wants you to follow divine instruction. He wants you to walk in line with his word. So the law of obedience, obedience to his word, obedience to the voice of God, obedience to the principles that are in the Bible, compliance and obedience to the laws that govern increase. Now, like I said, that's already a whole book on itself. Number two, the law of positioning. The law of positioning wasn't found by marketing experts that talk about uh, price positioning and place and so on and so on. This law was established in scripture. What, where should I be positioned to access maximum return on everything that I'm doing? So number two, the law of positioning. If you're positioned wrong, you will continue to suffer loss. Many people are in the wrong place, wrong city, wrong suburb, wrong church. 
You must be in a church that believes in financial increase, that teaches the law and the principles of tithing and so on, that believes in financial increase. Don't be in a place where every Sunday you're taught poverty and you're expecting to find increase in your life. It doesn't work. You've got to be correctly positioned so that you're empowered to experience increase in your life. Number three, the law of timing. The law of timing. You've got to know when to obey, when to move, when to plant, when to follow the instruction. Number four, the law of seeding. What do I do with my seed? Where do I sow my seed? When do I sow my seed? When you understand the law of seeding, you activate increase in your life many people don't know the timing don't know when to sow don't know how to sow don't know how to govern look after their seed so many times we find ourselves in trouble number uh, five the law of covenant relationships covenant relationships are integral you cannot violate this law or principle and expect to experience increase in your life covenant relationship with god covenant relationship with your family your wife your husband your children covenant relationship in your local church covenant relationship with brothers and sisters covenant relationship with your business partners and those that you do business with don't ever think you will experience increase if you're consistently violating the law of covenant relationships now, what is interesting is even the heathens, the unsaved people understand the power of covenant relationships. So, in the kingdom, we need to relearn and apply these principles. And then the last one. Now, the people that debate on the subject of tithing, giving, and sowing, and etc. Et don't understand that the concept of giving, in fact, the Bible from Genesis all the way through to Revelation is teaching us one of the most powerful laws on the universe. It's the law of honor. Tithing is about honor. Giving is about honor. Worship is about honor. Prayer is about honor. Faith is about honor. Going to your service is about honor. Do you honor your word? Do you honor your promise? Are you dependable in your local church? Can your pastor depend on you? Can your pastor know that you will be there to serve, to deliver? Do you have honor? Without honor, you will be break the flow of the law you will violate a fundamental law that once violated it is sure i don't i i i don't know the only way you can have increase in your life is if you're a person of honor so those laws again the law of obedience the law of positioning the law of timing the law of seeding the law of covenant relationships and the law of honor over the next few weeks, we're going to be breaking down these laws, having a good conversation to help you understand what you can do to activate increase in your life. Thank you so much for joining in. I want to encourage you before I go, make the investment. The book is coming out in a couple of weeks, uh, probably in a week or two. Make the investment. We've done typesetting. We're about to go for proof copy reading, printing, and all of that. And then we're going to be taking it for final print run. So I'm really excited about the season that we're in. The making of a kingdom millionaire. God has called you to be a millionaire. We established that last week. It's God's will for you to experience increase until you become a millionaire, until you're able to give in millions, until you're able to build schools, hospitals, and universities, until you're able to pay up the national debt for your government and get your nation and the young people in your nation out of the debt cycle. That's what God wants us to do. The law or the principle is redeem the time for the days are evil. How do we redeem time? You buy back time using currency. Powerful principles. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Dr. Titch on Economic Masters. Stay in touch. Get in touch. Connect with us again tomorrow, 8, 8 o'clock, and we're going to have ourselves a great time. God bless you. The kingdom is advancing. We will never take sides. Yeah, we're going to take over. There's no need to hide. We will occupy. We take in the city. Born at such a time. Cause the Lord is with me. I will proclaim and remain. Yes, I am a tither. Uh -huh. God is coming through. The devil is a liar. Anointed by Ooh. the spirit. Taking the marketplace. Rise up, son and daughter. And make the change.
chain, chain. Hidden off the tail, tell me why you acting frail We going bigger, thinking bigger at the massive scale We put our hands to the plow, so we will prevail Never fail those days of poverty, yes it's setting sail Out of our lives, with God we are prosperous The climate of this world, no it doesn't bother us From a different kingdom, they can't be hard on us We will overcome, that's what God has promised us Agents of change, be the change, and make a change We have power in the name, to break the chains By the blood and the tide, revokes the curse A spoken word, open doors, no lack of thirst We making history, unlocking the mysteries Calling forth what we see, and surely that is victory Everywhere we tread, we will see his face Mode taking over here and there in the marketplace The kingdom is advancing, we will never Take side, yeah, we came to take over There's no need to hide, we will occupy We take in the city, born at such a time Cause the Lord he is with me, I will proclaim and remain Yes, I am a tiger, uh-huh. God is coming through The devil is a liar, anointed by the spirit Taking the marketplace